I really love driving open wheelers. They're just uh, just such a thrilling thing to drive. Right on the starters on the grid, they have just had a two-minute warm-up run, and uh, grid position one going to Frank Matic with the phenomenal practice time yesterday. One lap at 50.8 seconds, giving him an average of 106.4 miles an hour. This is seven seconds faster than the previous record set up by Malcolm Ramsey uh, at the opening meeting in January. Grid position two is David Hobbs in car number 10. On grid position three, Graham McRae. Glenn Vicks has mounted his starting platform and there is a half a minute to go. In the next row we have car number two, Mike Harewood, Kevin Bartlett and Teddy Pellet, the Belgium in car number 34. Things are all in readiness now for the start of 70 laps in this, the final round of the Watkins 100 Tasman Championship. Majority of cars being Formula 5000, one or two two-litre cars. Up comes the starter's flag. No way. David Hobbs getting a slight edge there as they left the uh, start line and now go down towards the end of the straight for the first time round. Now Graham McRae in car number 22 Looks as though he might have ducked straight into the lead there. We'll pick them up when they get a little bit nearer after they've wound their way around through the S's. But it looked as though uh, Graham McRae, the present holder of the championship round, might have run straight down the side of the wall and ducked into the front and led the way into the first corner. Yes, there he is, Graham McRae in car number 22. Shopping into the lead in the first lap. As they come over the oval now, well over 100 miles an hour on their approach to this corner. In second place is Frank Matic in car number three. In third place, car number 10, David Hobbs. First of the local drivers is car number 25, John Walker, driving his Repco Holden. They have one left behind them with Graham McRae showing the drivers the way. Graham has already won sufficient events, sufficient rounds of the Tasman Championship to already have taken out the, the award. But nevertheless, we're still going to see a, a very great race with the top drivers, not only in Australia, but we have the top international drivers here competing for the first time ever in South Australia, here at the new circuit of the Adelaide International Raceway. Graham McRae in car 22 makes his second run around the oval now. Matt is moving up a little bit closer. Only about 15 to 20 yards separate the first two drivers, then about 40 yards to car number 10. In fourth place is Mike Harewood, a motorcycle rider who attained seven world championships prior to moving over to cars. And then was given a drive in the John Surtees camp. And uh, Mike Harewood has been doing very well in cars. Whether he'll ever get seven world championships in in cars is hard to say, but it's a phenomenal record for a man, particularly as he's only uh, 26 years of age, I believe, so he must have started riding his motorbikes at a pretty early run. Graham McRae coming onto the oval again. And his leader, GMI. This is the Formula 5000 car, a V8 car. Frank Maddich in a similar, same power, similar vehicle. Right behind her, only about six yards separating the first and second. David Hobbs still holding third from Mike Harewood, then quite a gap to the fourth man. Car number 12, Robert Mark. Sorry, Warwick Brown, and then McLaren 10B. And it's the final over the first city state car. And the first car in the pits now, one of our local drivers. John McCormick or Gary Cooper didn't quite grab it then as we pick up the leaders again. Very little between them. Car 22, Graham McRae holding a slight edge over Frank Maddich in car number three. They stretch out into the oval a little bit now when McRae gives it perhaps a wee bit larger footfall than does uh, Frank Maddich in car three. Beautiful power drift right around the oval. And they break away then down the straight.
No slip streaming done here as Matic pulls out now and goes around McRae. Those first four cars have got about uh, 100, 150 yards on the rest of them, perhaps even more. Yes, they're certainly going to lap the field in, in before half the race is over, Bob. So 22 is back there. There's Maddox now makes an approach, comes down a little bit wide, coming onto the adverse cambered corner into the oval, but McRae pulls away again. Maddox comes up again, almost within touching distance, tries to duck down underneath, but uh, McRae is not giving any distance away on the inside of the track. <laughs> Maddich pulled out then, looked as though he was going to try and challenge Graham McRae. Didn't like the look of that puff and smoke then. Looked a rather nasty little puff, but it had come from, uh, from cement powder that had been put on the track. Graham McRae holding his lead. Been challenged all the time by Frank Maddich, though. It's not going to be an easy race for McRae. He's going to have pressure on him right throughout the 70 laps of this fourth and final round of the Tasman Championship Series. Maddich dropped back considerably after we saw a, a little puff of dust or smoke at the end of the straight. Whether he is experiencing any trouble or not, I don't know. Still in third place is David Hobbs, and Mike Howard in car number three is holding four long gap back to Max Stewart in car number six. And he's followed by Warwick Brown. And Gary Campbell in the little two-leader car, who's doing extremely well, staying up with the, the first quarter of the field. I think the local that was out was Gary Cooper, Alan. Number nine is uh, John McCormick. He's still in the race. So number eight, the orphan sports car driven by Gary Cooper, is the one in the pits. Oh, thank you, Bob. Back into the oval again. My word, these cars come around quickly, don't they? A little bit different to the previous event when they're doing lap speeds far less than half the time of the series production cars. These four cars, the four leaders, have got about half a lap on their uh, fifth car. And that's after what? About five, about ten There's laps, is it? Six, six just laps. gone through six. Gray seems to get away faster, but he has to break faster to go through those corners. Yes. Robbie Frankovic now is the car right in front of them. McRae pulls out to go around the slower car now and then takes a completely different line into the, cur into the curve caused by Frankovic's car that just seemed to be right in the spot where McRae and Maddich have both been putting their cars in their line-up for the corner. Lap 14. Not to worry, they move on now, come around through the, the S's. Almost hugging the ground as they come around. Probably three or four inches clearance under the under the nose of McRae's car, and uh, it, it's the most magnificent looking vehicle. Now Maddox comes up very closely, ducks underneath McRae now, draws level, in fact gets his nose just in front, and there's a car right in front. This is going to be very interesting. McRae had to brake. McRae had to brake, and Maddox moves into the lead now for the first time in car number three. McRae perhaps bought by a, a slightly slower car then. May have been Colin Hyams in car 11, not quite sure on that till they come around next time, but he was slightly balked and Maddich made no bones about taking every advantage of the slight hold up to McRae and he shot into the lead in car number three. The car of his own design which in front of the way. Now we have McRae in car number 22 trailing Maddich for the first time. Onto the oval, and now it's Maddich's time to streak away. He has car number 25. John Walker will be the first car that will come into his sights as he moves away from McRae now and builds up rather a comfortable lead in these top notch cars. Frank Maddich, about 30 to 40 yards in front of Graham McRae. Then in third place, Mike Howard has moved up past uh, car number 10, David Hobbs, so that we already have two place changes in the first four cars. Car number three, Frank Maddich holding the lead in his Repco Maddich A50. In second place, Graham McRae in car number 22, the leader GMI. In third place, we have Mike Halewood in car number two, the Certes TS811. 
and then in fourth place we have David Hodge who held third for so long in his McLaren M22. Lap 25. We'll pick up Matic again now, back onto the oval. Another clear run of this day. Nothing in front of him, perhaps three or four hundred yards. And my gosh, he's got a good lead at this stage. Second man, Graham McRae, would be perhaps three or four hundred yards behind Matic at this stage, but Mike Howard's pushing very close. He challenges McRae now as they pull out to go past another car. There's David Hobbs' periscope going down there, the white periscope that uh, is such a magnificent form of identification for us here who are watching the, the event on a monitor and uh, makes it very easy to at least pick out car number 10 and his position in the field where cars are so very similar in appearance to each other. Drawing a little bit closer to uh, Robbie Frankovic now, car number 60 in the car 10B. He will no doubt be the next car in his sights. As he comes around the wall, there you can see Frankovic's car in front of Matic now. In fact, there's a string of three other cars there, but Matic is going to. And there's a flow of smoke there from uh, Graham McRae. McRae. That will put McRae out of the event, I would say, at this stage. A great puff of smoke, and he's pulled straight off the track and onto the infield. That will be the... And there's another bingo down there as two cars go off the track in a, mob, uh, a mad melee, rather, and spin off into the infield. And that could put one or two drivers out in that part of the event, too. We'll wait now for Mattis to come around. Here he is, still going quite well as he comes onto the oval. No doubt realising now that some pressure is gone with the withdrawal of Graham McRae. There's Maddox. And we have Howard still in the running. He comes around now. He'll appear right on your spot. There he is, there's Mike Howard in car number two. And he's followed by David Hobbs in car number ten. So we still have the three top line drivers there who are so very close. Frank Maddich in car number three, then Mike Hayerwood in car two, and uh, David Hobbs in car number ten. There Hayerwood moves up a wee bit, Hobbs senses him there, sees him there, his rear vision mirror and draws away again. But now Hayerwood moves up closer, right on the tail of Hobbs now, as they come out of the oval and line up on the straight. Now Hayerwood pulls out as though he's going to make a challenge, but no, he gets back into the slipstream. Now he pulls out and lines up beside Hobbs, then ducks back in again behind him as he gets his line through the corner. Colin Holmes in car number 11 pulling the Lola into the pit counter for some uh, attention. Here's our leader again now, coming to three, Frank Maddich. We'll let him go for a few laps while we've been watching the, the dice between. Oh, Maddich has spun. He's spun on the adverse camber corner. Now he's got a fair bit of lead if he can keep going. He waved a hand then, though. Yes, he's still mobile. I think. He may have stalled his motor then, coming back onto the track. He's getting out of the car. Maddich is getting out of the car. So we'll wait now on uh, Hobbs, David Hobbs, in car number 10. There's Hobbs going down into the corner at the bottom of the straight. Frank Matic's car has been manhandled off the track now by, there it is, being pushed well clear of the track, and Frank takes his helmet off, probably realising that there's nothing that can be done at this stage. Now around through the S's is David Hobbs in car number 10. Oh, he gave a little bit of a twitch there then as he approached the, the tyres. Yes, he's gone, and Howard has gone through. He's got to wait for the traffic to go. He kept his motor running, though, on the same spot. That's probably getting quite a coating of rubber over there on the adverse camber corner now. And, uh, of course, they're no doubt getting down a little bit on their, their grip with their tyres. And this could, could have been the cause of Matic spinning out and also David Hobbs. So now Howard goes into the lead. He's battled for it. Howard is in number two now, leading the, the event in car number two, the TS-811 Surtees. Mike Howard driving for the John Surtees camp. 
holds the lead. And this is the final round of the Rothman series. Here's Howard coming around now towards the, the nasty corner, the naughty little corner that's caught uh, both Mike Howard, both uh, Frank Maddich and uh, David Hobbs in car number 10. Both lost uh, Maddich, of course, losing the event there and Hobbs losing a lot of time allowing Hale Wood in car number two, who now sweeps out of the, the oval onto the straight. Well clear of any traffic now. He has uh, just about uh, a half mile, almost the, the circumference of the oval lead over David Hobbs, who, as Hobbs now, almost swept out of sight. He went out wide coming out of the oval. And Hobbs goes down in second place. John Hobbs in car number 10, holding the lead. And this is the final round of the Tasman Championship being run at the Adelaide International Raceway. This is our new, very lavish circuit here at Virginia, some 35 miles north of Adelaide. A new circuit, only running its second major meeting since being opened in January. David Hobbs comes down under come the 25, John Walker, and then makes his way around the outside of John number 50, then Frank Radisich from New Zealand, driving the McLaren 10B. Now someone pulls out to draw level with Hobbs. Most unusual thing to happen at this stage. There shouldn't be anybody near enough to him to worry about a challenge. Nevertheless, Hobbs moves on then without further ado and sustains his already quite convincing lead. It's a magnificent sight to watch the, the top drivers, their control of the car, the way they place it on corners, the amount of track they save, and their approaches to corners, which probably in the first 10 cars would be almost identical. Well, Mike Howard has moved into third place after doing the tyre, and he's got 19, to go. 19 laps to go, so he, having lost uh, two laps, the, uh, David Hobbs must have 17 laps to go to complete the event, and then it's going to be our little job to find out who is in the gap between Hobbs and Hellwood. Must look for a likely bot at this stage to find out who could fill it. Here's David Hobbs in car 10 on the oval, comes up towards two slower cars now. Very Campbell in the open wagon. It's only a two litre car but he's circulating very well and very consistently. Likewise John Walker in car 25. It's a, fire, it's a Formula 5000, the Repco Holden, but John's doing quite well and uh, I'm sure he's up in the first to four or five places. Right, we're going along the cars in the pits now, those that have withdrawn. We have uh, Colin Himes, car number 11 there. There's Gary Cooper's car number eight, the Elvin Repco. They withdrew quite early in the pieces, then we, as we duck back to David Hobbs in car number 10. I think Hobbs is treating that corner with a, a heck of a lot of sort of caution and respect now as he comes onto the oval. Makes no bones about keeping the car in the right direction. Probably over the has caused his spin before when uh, he was trying very hard to stay in front of Mike Halewood and uh, came onto the oval. But Halewood has 17 laps to go and he's 10 seconds behind the leader who is David Hobbs in car number 10. So Howard will try and uh, make up the 10 seconds. But then again, not knowing their code, I would say this will be 10 seconds between Howard and the second man, not the leader. They're stabbing at a shot in the dark there, but I, I should imagine that uh, with two laps lead over, over him that uh, David Hobbs was able to get, the lead would be more likely to be a minute at 10 seconds. And here's Howard coming onto the, he's on the oval now. 
There he is now. Uh, I should imagine that he would be at least a minute behind him. And he has a 10 second delay from the car nearest to him, the car in second place. There's a spin there, just right behind David Hobbs. Hobbs just got clear, just past the driver, and uh, then the car right behind him spun in a flurry of dust as he moved off the track. Fortunately, it was just after Hobbs had passed. There's Hobbs, well clear and dry now, comes back onto the oval. There's Mike Halewood. The man who ran into a certain number of outs. Had a spin and uh, blew a tyre. I should imagine all stops would be out with Howard now. As Howard breaks back out of the over onto the straight, we're back on David Hobbs now in car number 10. There's car number 17 pulled up in a very unusual spot. Over here, right on the, the corner, right in the middle of the oval, is Gary Campbell mentioned just earlier that he had been circulating quite well and very consistently but now we find him parked right against the cement parapet here um, slap bang in the middle of the corner you see him there he is time and time again you see him now as we pick up the other cars going around the oval and back onto the straight and there's not very much that Gary can do other than sit there in his car all he has, no he's got out here, he looks to be over the other side of the car There's Hobbs moving down now behind two slower cars as they go down around the bottom end of the circuit, down through the sort of tightish corners that we have here. Tight in comparison to, say, the oval. There's the blue flag being waved frantically to the two cars in front to let them know there's a faster car about to overtake them. The official's right on the board. The other man, the other car, got such a fright that he spun out. Still on the track he's right two, in the centre of the track two, in a very bad spot. The cars are slowing down almost to a crawl, but he uh, he's pushing his own car off now, clearing it. There's John McCormick in car number nine, going going down now behind David Hobbs. I think that's the 54th lap for uh, Hobbs. 54, giving him 16 to go. Uh, Oh, there's a cloud of smoke too from another car. That's David Hobbs, my word, there's our leader puffing great clouds of smoke. He seems to have cleared it now. Let's hope it's only a, a temporary display down there and not uh, something internal. He seems to be pushing on quite well again, but uh, there could be some dry cement powder being... No, there it is again. But it could be... Uh, it could be dry cement powder that's been pushed down to uh, soak up oil that has been spilled on the track. We'll keep an eye on Hobbs and just see how he goes. Now he's coming into the oval just as quickly as ever. Moves around past the stalled car. A few officials have moved over there to try and move it out of the way with the opportunity to drive it. And there Hobbs goes down now on the outside of the track. Hobbs takes his car down the straight. Seems to be driving a, a fairly cool and collected race, David Hobbs. Incidentally, he was the winner of the 1971 American Formula A Championship. This is the uh, United States equivalent of our Formula 5000. And David Hobbs is one of the few who has made it to the very top after being considered a washout by many critics. He's only 32 years of age, and just a few years ago, he tagged by seasoned observers overseas as quick but unreliable. So uh, this is something he's been trying hard to show up. Inside two years, he's confounded his critics by being placed second in the 1969 American Championship and third in 1970. Last year, he hit the groove well and truly and came up smiling with five major victories and six new lap records. And today we see him going full Helga Skelter, having outdistanced his opposition one way or another, either mechanically or by driving, and now he's sitting well out in front in this the eighth and final round of the Tasman series being run here at the Adelaide 
new raceway, Adelaide International Raceway. I haven't seen a sign go out for Hobbs, but I noticed that Mike Halewood's uh, friend down in the pits is certainly keeping him well informed. He's showing now that uh, he's got nine laps to go, Mike Halewood, so he hasn't got that much room left to uh, catch up on Hobbs. He's about uh, minus nine on Hobbs, so you show on the board. What does that mean, do you think, Alan? Nine oh, seconds? I'm a little bit doubtful about that, Bob. I, um, I can't really see how he's only got nine seconds on Hobbs. I feel that there must be someone between he and Hobbs. Um, unless they change that wheel a lot quicker than I think they did, I think Hobbs would have, would have at least gained one lap for sure, which must have given him at least a 50-second lead over, over uh, Halewood. Well, the board's been changed to show eight laps left and uh, Hobbs eight, minus eight, so it's going down at the same rate as... Oh, well, if they it looks as though they're in the same lap, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, eight laps to go for Hobbs, there's no doubt about that, Bob, you're on the ball there. cars that have fallen by the wayside. One was uh, car number five, Kevin Bartlett, whom we saw very little of in this event. After the start, I, I don't remember seeing much of him after that because we were, we were very wrapped up with the uh, Maddich McRae duel and he escaped us altogether. And uh, it's only just that I've seen his car parked over there, well inside the pit area, that uh, made me realize that he was a starter. circulating quite well in the two litre Mildred Waggett as car number seven, car number 17, I'm sorry, Gary Campbell comes into the pits. This was the car that stopped out on the fence. There's David Hobbs in car number 10. Now, there's Howard almost, uh, what would he be hit? Only about 150 yards behind Hobbs at this stage. There's, uh, there's Howard. And there's Hobbs just in front of him. You can see Hobbs' periscope and the car directly behind him is Mike Halewood. Now, whether he's a lap behind or whether he's made up that time, we can only wait until we see the flag fall and give you the official results at that stage. But now we have uh, around about six laps to go in this final series of the Tasman Championship round. Teddy Pellet in car number 34, the McLaren 10B. He was doing quite well up until he was forced to have a, a short stop. And uh, he, he then got back into the running again. And he's been circulating quite regularly since then. David Hobbs in car number 10. And there's Howard in car number two, making up ground all the time. There's Howard appearing now in car number two, right behind Hobbs. He's making up time lap after lap. Both they go down into the bottom corners. Right, there's Hobbs and Howard now. As they come onto a slower car, the blue flag can give it to the car in front. David Hobbs swoops past him, followed by Howard as they come down and make their way onto the oval once again. Well, I've just been informed, Alan, that there's two laps between these two. Well, we've been thinking this all along, yes. Bob, but we, we couldn't say too much because we didn't have anything official. Three laps to go for Howard. Well, that would mean then that Hobbs is almost on his last lap. He should have and one I lap to go. This could Glenn, be right. Yeah, Glenn Dix has moved over towards his flags. There's one lap to go. Yes, one lap to go for David Hobbs. Yes, Glenn Dix is picking up his uh, chequered flag now, and Howard has just gone past Hobbs. 
but Hobbs is still holding the lead here in car number 10 by, as Bob just told you, at least two laps. Might be a lap and uh, yes, all but 10 yards now. now. Here's David Hobbs in car number 10. The leader coming onto the oval for uh, at the, the moment last the time. Uh, Belgian Palette is in third place in car number 34. Oh, now we know and here comes the winner. There it is. Car 10 gets the chequered flag from Glenn Dix at the end of this, the final round of the Tasman Championship Series. We're waiting now to get the second or third man. I'd be a little bit inclined to think that uh, there's not a great deal between Howard and uh, Pellet. Here's John McCormick now who will be flagged in. All cars will be flagged off the track now and official results will be taken from lap times. Well, we can certainly tell you that uh, David Hobbs in car number 10 was first over the line and in a few moments we should have the official result as the other cars have come off the track. But here's Hayward about to come in now and uh, this will be his last lap now that David Hobbs has gone through. The cars will come off the track and we'll have the final result for you in just a moment. The official result, first David Hobbs in a McLaren M22, second Mike Halewood in a Surtees TS811 and third Teddy Paulette in a McLaren M10B and the time for the 105 miles, 62 minutes, 40.5 seconds. Graham McRae won the Tasman Cup with 39 points from Mike Halewood, 29, and Frank Gardner, 27. By finishing second to Alan Moffat, John Goss won the South Pacific Series Production Touring Car Championship. And that ends our telecast from the Adelaide International Raceway at Virginia.